For you, the people that don't know me, my name is Richard Gardner, and I work at the Tutoring Center here in San Diego, and been doing it for about 20 years, and I've been doing advanced stats for about 15 years. So the main thing I'm going to show you is, I'm going to show you some of the basics of SPSS, but before that, I'm going to show you how to get SPSS for free through Alliance on your computers. And then I'm going to try to show you where our existing resources are. And by that, I mean, we have a couple of hundred different SPSS tutorials on how to do anything and everything you will ever need to know about SPSS during your voyage at Alliant International University. So if you have any questions, just stop me. Sometimes I, I get a little excited and I just kind of ramble on and I talk too fast and that kind of stuff. So. But again, let's get this show on the road. This is a 30-minute one, so again, stop me. SPSS stands for Statistical Package for the Social Sciences. They changed the name once to PASW, and I don't know what that stands for, but it only would lasted for about a year, and then they changed it back. So, and we're the the current version we have is version 27. When I first started using it, it was version 13 or something. So it keeps changing and it keeps getting better. It's getting more and more user-friendly. We don't need to use that syntax code like we did in the old days. And everything's, everything is, uh, you push a little button and, it, and it'll get that for you. Let's get this show on the road. First of all, SPSS is free for students. I'm going to show you the links and then I'm going to switch over to the and show you where they, the web pages are on how to get the free version. Um, so what I what I try to suggest is everybody go to the academic support and tutoring services page on the portal because everything I'm about to go over is linked from this one page. And there it is. But I'm, I don't know why I put that on there because you guys can't see it. But let's go ahead and, and switch over there. So how would I do that? I would do this, and then I'm going to reshare with my internet. Which one of these is my internet? Whiteboard PowerPoint. Is that it? Google? Hey, hey, I found it. All right, Rich. Yeah, exactly. I found it. Hey, hey, hey. So I'm getting old, you guys. You can't pick up me. I am old. There's no question about it. So. <laughs> All right, so that was, where was that? That was, uh, right here, bam. Okay, let's just go to the main page. So, Academic Support Home. We're under Student Affairs. Go to Academic Support and Tutoring Services. This is the, this is the main page. And you'll notice on the left-hand side, it's got all the different links. And, but this is where our tutors hang out. This is where I am normally if I'm not working with somebody. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Please, please look this stuff over. There's a ton of good stuff on here. We've been putting it together for 20 years. We got hundreds of videos made by most of them by me, but some of my tutors made some, um, some of the teachers made some. So it's, it's just an incredible resource. So SPSS, you go down here and it says free SPSS. And then I, I, I show you how it works here. You have to fill out a personal request form send it to the IT department. Uh, you know, let me fix that link. They keep changing the links. They don't tell me, but I'll fix it. And there it is. So you fill out a form here and just tell them that you're either working on a dissertation or you're taking a stats class and they'll, they'll verify it and then send you the download and the link. So that part works out pretty good. And what else we got going on here? Uh, and here's a video on how to how to get it done through the through the IT department, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so now while I'm here, I might as well show you some of the cool stuff. I'm I'm currently migrating everything that we had was in a Moodle, was it a Alliant Moodle? Um, but Alliant is moving away from a Moodle, so I finally got permission to put it on the Alliant website itself. So from the front page. Down here, it says new stats coming soon. So everything in statistics, I broke down into two approaches. One is a vocabulary approach. And, 
example, let's say you want to see how to do a, a T test in, in SPSS. You click on T, and then, you know, there's, there's three different T tests, if you didn't know. And here's, here's the definition side, but here comes the cool part is the, um, the actual analysis is, is in what we call the statistic analysis side. So it's two sides, right? There's, there's the vocabulary side, and then there's a the process side. So again, T-tests, which, which kind of T-tests you want? Uh, T-tests. Let's say you're going to do a um, 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 an independent t-test, which is the most popular one. But then I give you examples on how to do it, how to do it by hand. In the old days, we had teachers do it by hand. You look it up in, uh, in a table, how to do it in Excel, and how to do it in SPSS. So everything we got, normally, almost everything, we have a by hand, in case you have one of those cruel teachers that make you do it by hand. Or Excel, Excel does a lot. It does a lot. It doesn't do as much as SPSS, but it does all the big tests. And then finally, SPSS, so everything's right there. And, okay, I'm going to get back to my PowerPoint because I already forgot what it was. Where were we? Okay, we were over here. We... Done that, done that, done that. Okay, uh, well, might as well show you this. All right, so there's the dissertation toolbox. So I know a lot of you guys are going to be, if not working on your dissertation already, then you soon will be. So I'm going to switch back over and show you the dissertation toolbox real quick. And... And again, it's, it's the same thing. You can get there from the Academic Support Center front page. And here's the dissertation toolbox. So it's got everything, APA formatting, how to work with Qualtrics. It's even got an IRB tip video in there, Excel formatting, all the resources that we have online, plus a lot of link to the library. Okay, so I think that's enough for now. Let's actually pull up the software program. How's that? I know that's why you're here. Uh, I apologize for dragging on. <clears throat> and I'm going to lose my voice here pretty soon. So, all right, this is SPSS. Now, this SPSS file was downloaded from Qualtrics, which means it hasn't been cleaned up yet. <clears throat> so, most of you guys are going to get your data from Qualtrics in, in some kind of form of a survey, or if you have some kind of outside data for it, that's fine as well. But you'll notice that the first dozen or so variables are, they're not, you're not going to use them, right? They're, they're information from SPSS, which yeah, I really don't know why they give it to you, but it's all here. So basically the first thing you do is you save it as a copy and then you start deleting stuff, delete, 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 delete. So now I'm going to show you a bad example of, where is that? Is this the bad one? No, that's not the bad one. the bad one okay give me a second you guys yeah this is the bad one it says bad right in the title okay so let me show you a few things wrong with this if you if you if you don't set up your qualtrics correctly it's going to download incorrectly so what's going on here is you'll notice that the, it, it accidentally dummy coded a lot of different things hold on a second no that wasn't it <laughs> Or you see how the numbers don't represent one is yes, three is no, Man. or three is agree, four is disagree. You got to keep an eye on Qualtrics. It doesn't always download what you think it's going to download. So, um, and there was that. And then this one, it'll automatically dummy code everything. So this one is ethnicity. Instead of being a single variable, she accidentally got you know, seven different 
dummy coded variables, which you really don't want. It's a quick fix, kind of. Well, it's not that quick, but it has to be fixed before you can do it. So that those, these are some bad examples. And right off the bat, this, this young lady has 227 variables, which is a lot. So what, what she needs to do now is to run some factor analyses on these, on these survey results and then run some reliability checks to make sure that they're, they're asking what they want. All right, let me pull up something in, and I'll just run through a couple basic steps here. <laughs> How about this one? All right, there's a good one. Yeah, there's a good one. So, what would you guys like to see? Um, let me let me pull something better up here. Hold on a second. Uh, 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 uh. Open, study me. There's one. There's a good one. Practice with them. Got everything. Here we go. All right. Normally, we start out with what we call the demographics. So, like ethnicity, political party, gender, handedness, those are all nominal variables. So with nominal variables, first thing you do is you make some bar charts or something. So the fastest way to do that is go to analyze, descriptives, frequencies. So I'm going to stick the first four variables in. And I, I like bar charts. And once you click bar charts, it'll automatically stick in a frequency table. So depending on who's on your board, some of them like the tables like this, frequency tables, and some of them like bar charts like this, and some of them like both, okay? But that's a quick right off the bat thing. And there's, there's more than one way to do everything in SPSS all the time. More than one way to do everything. Now, can you guys see my output? Yes. Okay, you can see my output. Good. Okay. So, again, if I'm doing something stupid, raise your hand or something, and I'll stop talking. Okay. So there's the demographics with the you know with the bar graphs, how many are in each group, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So now let's let's check for normality. We got depression and weight. I'm going to show you how to check for normality real quick. Ninety-nine percent of everything you do is in analyze. These are where all the tests are. This is where you check your assumptions, run the actual tests, and you know may, this is the major chunk graders through analyze. So you would go to descriptive statistics and explore. So I'm going to check weight and depression to see if they're normal or not. Right? They fit a normal distribution. You go to plots. Don't use the stem and leaf. Nobody uses that anymore. Histograms we do use. And this is your money box right here. Normality plots with tests. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice and I apologize. But you scroll down, there's your histogram. Not normal. There's another histogram. Not normal. Now, one thing about SPSS, it always gives you more stuff than you really need. Right? Nobody uses a QQ test anymore. Some people still use the PP or the other way around. We don't use the QQ plot. We do use the PP. That's not the right one. PP plot. QQ plot. Oh, well. But here's, here's the box right here. Cold Magorov Smirnoff test. That is supposed to be for a sample size of 2,000 or above. And then Shapiro Wilk test is supposed to be like for 100 or below. But it depends which book you read. I, honestly, God, I, I've seen it backwards. So just pick the one you want, right? But they usually agree. So according to this, depression violated the assumption of normality, right? That's this one, <clears throat> right? So that one's not normal. But then according to the, the output, <clears throat> this one is normal enough, right? This is weight. But according to the output here, 
weight did not violate the assumption, right? These p-values, these sig values have to be less than 0.05, and neither one of them are. So big hint here, don't always go by the histograms. Histograms are not reliable by the eye. It's, you should go by the, the, multi, the mathematical test, the Kolmogorov and or the um, shapiro Wilk test. <clears throat> um, does anybody have any requests? You know, I could, I could do just practically anything in here. I could make it sit up and make you guys waffles if you want. You guys like waffles? Uh, Valeria. Anybody? Anybody want to write on run on ANOVA or a T test or correlation or regression or all of the above? I'd like to see a correlation. Correlation. Okay, let's take depression and weight. Right? So for a Pearson's correlation, both variables should be continuous. Continuous is scale. Right? So we would go to analyze. And you try to pick the word that sounds like the one you're doing. Correlate, that's you. Bivariate means you're going to correlate two variables. So I said depression and weight. Now, if you want, you could click a Spearman's correlation. A Spearman's correlation is if your data is ordinal or if your data is violating too many assumptions uh, needed to run a Pearson's correlations, which aren't that many, by the way. So, but you'll notice I'm going to show you the Pearson's and, and the Spearman correlation. They're practically the same number anyway, so it's not a big deal which way you go. But there's your correlation, and so depression and weight are correlated by one point or point one two nine, but the, it is not a significant correlation, right? The significance has to be less than 0.05 before you can reject the null. Remember, the null states that there is no relationship. There is no significant correlation. So if that number, if that sig value is less than 0.05, you get to say the opposite. You can say, yeah, there is. Any other requests? I take requests, anybody? You start singing. La, 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 la. Um, an ANOVA? Okay, we'll run an ANOVA. So let's run an ANOVA to see if there's a significant difference in, let's pick um, <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Oh, look at it. We got job satisfaction. That's going to be our DV. And let's pick, I don't know, let's pick ethnicity as an IV. So remember, a one-way between group ANOVA. The IV is a grouping variable, a nominal variable, categorical variable. The DV has to be a continuous ratio or scale variable. So we would go analyze. And what an ANOVA and a t-test does, it compares means. Okay. So there's two ways to do an ANOVA. You could do it through the compare means ways. Don't do it that way. You don't get the information out as much as you do it this way. General linear model. So general linear model, a univariate, that is going to do the ANOVAs for us. You get a ton more information from this function instead of the other one, right? The other one is like third grade. This one's like college. <clears throat> okay, so the DV, what did I say? Job satisfaction. Ethnicity is our groups, okay? And then these boxes, just click them until you get familiar with them. Sometimes there's good stuff in there. Like model, we don't need to do that anymore. Contrast, not that. Plots, no, no, no. Post hocs, yeah, maybe. And then estimated means, uh, we, we're doing a post hoc. We don't need that. Save, no options. Always options because this is going to check your assumptions. Effect size, I'm sorry, descriptives, effect size, power, and the homogeneity variance test. Click OK. There's your output. Breaks it down nice and neat for you. How many in each group? So you see that number four, Asian American, there's only two people in it. That's problematic, right? It's, it's just problematic. Two people really don't make a group. Remember, statistics likes a big sample size because what it's doing is it's looking at the data in the middle, the middle pack of the data. That's what statistics does. 
right? And then here's all the averages right here, the beans. Now, I when I teach this class, I teach you guys how to look at these beans first because remember, they have to be significantly different before they can be get a significant output. And they're pretty close. You got a low one here, uh, 4.5. But again, that's the group that only has two in it. But then you have a high of 5.73. So I, it looks like there might be one. But you scroll down to the box. This is your sub of squares source of variance table. And this is where you look at it here. So according to this, the sig value is not significant. So that means that the, the differences in job satisfaction do not differ based on ethnicity. That's what that means. <clears throat> and a big hint, never look at intercepts. Intercept is not what you think it is. Do not look at it. It's always significant. It's just testing it against zero. <clears throat> so don't look at that. And then since since the ANOVA wasn't significant, we don't need to look at the postdoc tests, right? We already know there's no significance in there, right? So how about a repeated measures ANOVA? That's a good idea, Rich. Okay, let's do a repeated measures ANOVA. The one we just finished was a between group, right? And then now we're going to do a repeated measures. Same thing, general linear model. Repeated measures, also known as a within group. And let's see, what do we got going here? Uh, no, 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 no. Let's just pick three. Because you need a minimum of three, and we're going to define them. And let me figure out what three of them would be. Here's three. We do a pre time one, time two, time three, click. And then over here, same okay. thing. We want homage day. Mm -hmm. Hello, Maria Elena. Power of the test. You remember what power is? And here it goes. Da -da -da -da. These tell you how what what you named your repeated measures. Here's the means of the repeated measures. Again, they look pretty close. Your sample size isn't that big. So, again, we just let the software tell us if it's significant or not. And here's your first box, multivariate test. It, it says it's almost significant, but not quite. But this is not the right box to look at for this test. Normally, we look at the Wilkes Lambda, but only in a MANOVA, not in a regular ANOVA. And so we always go down to the source of variance. Dun, 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 dun. And... We have to look at if the variance was violated sphericity, and it did, unfortunately. This is your mouth least test of sphericity. And I know it might be going over you guys' heads, um, but sphericity is one of the assumptions for repeated measures. That's not an assumption for anything else. It's just for, just for repeated measures. And because this is so low, that means you violated the assumption. So we have to switch to one of either the greenhouse Unfelt or lower bound. And then if you ever if you want to learn what I'm talking about, I have no no fool and I have five different videos that'll explain this step by step by step with pictures and graphs and colors and jokes. <laughs> but and then you know, this is before my voice started giving out. But we go down to this box and this one says there is a significant difference. Yay. Right? No, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. <laughs> this is the one. But it's still significant. Yay. Right? Test of within subjects effects. So this first row is if it didn't violate that assumption of sphericity, so we can't use that. So normally I pick the Hunfelt uh, because normally it gives you a little bit, little bit tinier, better sig value, right? You want the lower sig value, and that's what it did here as well. So there is a significant difference between the two, between the three repeated measures, and then you go back up to the mean. And it looks like the pre-test was significantly higher than time two. And that's that's all you got to do is pick the highest and the lowest. That's it. So, crap, we're almost out of time. Anybody, any questions, anything, anything, hit me. I'm here for you. How far are you guys along in your dissertation? Because if you need help with Qualtrics, I'm available. Now, I'm not going to do your dissertation for you, but 
I will show you, I will help you clean up your data, show you which tests to run. Um, I'm, 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 I'm sure I can walk you through Qualtrics. I know how to set your questions so if they don't qualify, it'll kick them out. I know how to download the stuff. I know how to check the numbers to make sure they're in the right order before you download the stuff. Uh, I don't know anything about IRB, but I did make a video and a lot of people love it. But I had the IRB lady sitting right next to me telling me what to say. So, and anything? Hold on a second here. Let me check my PowerPoint. I put all my notes on the PowerPoint here, you guys. So again, so the dissertation toolbox, get there from the front page of the academic uh, support and tutoring on, on the portal. And everything's right there. Everything's on that front page. So dissertation toolbox got a ton of stuff. APA formatting, how to write a better introduction, how to write a table of contents, anything and everything. Um, that, that This one has about 10 years worth of what my tutors put together. Right? I'm only good at math and stats. I'm a math guy. I'm a, I'm a numbers guy. Language escapes me. It always have. Um, so, but it didn't escape my tutors, and they put together some smashing videos. So please check that out. Uh, what else we got here? Again, you get free SPSS. You get free Excel. You get free Microsoft Word, if you know how to do it, from Alliant. And we already did some analyses. More analyses, more analyses. Now, what I suggest is once you get SPSS, first thing you can do is I made a video on how to change the output into APA formatting. Big time saver, okay? So once you run your test and you get your tables and your charts, they will automatically be APA formatted. You don't have to go back in and, and spend hours and hours and hours trying to pretty that stuff for the APA people, okay? So demographics, measures of sensitivity. Okay, this is just what we do here. But anything that you need to do in statistics, SPS guests can do it. It's like working on a car. It's, it's, uh, it's not easy at first, but the more you work on it, the easier it gets. And again, I got five different videos on anything and everything that you can think of one more quickie you guys let me show you where i'm transferring this stuff from so again everything that's hold on a second here oh. don't you hate it when that, that zoom thing gets in the way of your stupid links come on you there we go oh, 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 oh. All right, so everything that is being moved to the portal, statistics-wise, was in one of the Hawks. So the Alliant Moodle, it's still up and running. They're going to turn it off one of these days. But if it's not in the new place, it will be in the old place. I'm just about to start transferring number three. Hawk three, this is the hard stuff. And, and I'm leading this off with, tips and tricks for SPSS. And these are like how to split a file, how to change a continuous variable into a categorical variable, how to select cases, how to change it to the APA formatting, you know, et cetera, et cetera. How to export an SPSS file into a Microsoft Word file, which you should do, right? Because SPSS, it puts out so much information. And I hate to say it, half of it, you don't even need. It just puts it out there anyway. So. This will be over there. And then by Christmas, the rest of this stuff will be done. But if you need it now, go to the Moodle. They're self-enrolling. Just type in the word Hawk, H-A-W-K, like the bird. They all show up. So Hawk 1 is, is basic stats for undergrad, but stuff that you guys should know. If you're, if you're entering uh, an advanced stats class, you should know the basics. So go to Hawk 1. Hawk 2 is your difference tests. That's your T-tests and your NOVAs. And then Hawk 3 are your relationship tests, that's your correlations, and all of your regressions. And so it starts out real easy. But then uh, this was originally designed for the PhD students down here in San Diego. And the teachers down here, they're like great white sharks. They are trying to kill these guys with statistics. 
but it goes way deep. So if you want to talk about moderators, mediators, hierarchical regression, stepwise regression, it's all right here. And I got a ton of rollovers, which I cannot figure out how to do in the portal. So I'm going to miss that. But it explains everything step by step by step by step. And then it ends it up with a sweet video or five videos that show you everything you need to know how to do it in SPSS, right? We even got logistic regression. Oh, yes. And we got factor analysis. Double yes. And then it's something that really everybody loves, path analysis and the absolute worst statistical analysis that is the hardest thing known to man to do. We have one. It's called confirmatory factor analysis or the dreaded structural equation modeling. Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you, do not do structural equation modeling because there's only like two teachers here in San Diego that understand it well enough that they would have to sit on your board. And this is a killer from Miller, so you really don't want to mess with that. Okay, I'm losing my voice. And I think it's time. So, last call for alcohol. Anybody? Questions? Comments? We cool? Thank you for all the information. You're welcome. And I'll be, I'll be honest with you guys. Half hour, it's like a pebble on Mount Whitney. You know, it's just, this is a hard, this was an introduction. So, go to the portal. Go to the Academic Support and Tutoring Center. That's where, that's the, that's the hub. Everything that I've done, we've done, is put right there, link, link, link. Last, you know, and if you can't, email me directly, rgardner at light.edu. I'm all over the website. Set up an appointment with me or one of my tutors. My tutors, I swear, they're, they're the best people I've ever met. They're smarter than I am. That's how I learned all this stuff is from my tutors. And I got about a half a dozen tutors, three writing tutors, and three stats tutors. So, you know, we are here for you. So don't take the fear out of it, you guys. This is an exciting process. A, a dissertation, you guys are like Sherlock Holmes. You're actually trying to find something important. And we're here for you. So anything? All right. Everybody send me $5. At... <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Can you start from the beginning? I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, actually, this is being recorded. I'll send you the link if you want. <clears throat> In fact, everything we've done on these power hours, we have videos. We recorded them all. And here, let me, last thing, I'll show you where they are. They are, where's my, no, 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 no. All the videos that we've ever done, anything we've ever done, we've started been recording it about 10 years ago, can be found right so, right, if you go back to the front page and you go to the dissertation toolbox, because the power hour is under the dissertation heading, and there's dissertation toolbox, previous power hour presentations. And so I did this exact one about five months ago, but it's, I, I tell you, it's going to be different than now. I think I actually ran some tests in there, but you know how to define your variables basics of SPSS, online resources, um, APA formatting. We get a lot of APA formatting, you know, and I, you know, my heart goes out to you guys. So anything we've ever done is right here so far. But again, I'm, you know, I hate to sound braggy, but I'm, I'm, I'm stunned. I wish I had these kind of resources going through school. But, uh, you know, way back then, telephones had something they called a dial. And there are only three TV channels. Yes, three TV channels. And and the soda cost a dime. <laughs> but again, I'm old. All right. If you got a question, put your hand up. All right. Well, I think that's it. Let me get my boss back here. Amber. Hi. <laughs> All right, what'd you guys do with Amber? You know, my boss is so smart. I'm gonna show you something, you guys. You're gonna, you're gonna freak out here. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I deal with maybe 10 or 15 people every day. And then my boss is so smart. She's the only one to recognize that painting. 
Does anybody know what that painting is? The girl that with the is, pearl earring. That is the girl with the, with the pearl earring. And it is now my favorite painting. I saw it like a week ago and I cannot get it out of my mind. But she knew what it was and she knew who the painting was and she knew when it was painted. Is it Vermeer? It is Vermeer. Who said that? Renee Reed. <laughs> oh my God, you guys are so smart. <laughs> I feel personally, I feel ripped off in my personal education because they kept putting me in math classes and science classes because I, you know, I, I did well in this course. I had one art class in my entire 10 years of education, 20 years of education, one art class and one music class. So I don't really get art and I, I love music. I love art now. I mean, I'm just old. I can't wait to retire. I think I'll take a painting. Just kidding. All right. So I guess we all leave now. Amber, Amber, come save me. I can't. Somebody kidnapped Amber. Um, so what campuses are you guys on? All right. Okay, people are leaving. Okay, everybody, I feel kind of guilty about ditching on you, but 2.30, I got I got somebody coming in here any minute now, so I'm going to jump over. So thank you, everybody, and goodbye.